Good morning, good morning, everyone. So, as you all well know, I love anything hot. And thanks to my brother-in-law, he was so kind. Someone gave him a whole bunch of hot peppers. And I've already jarred, I've made two jars of hot peppers. And I showed you how I make my rice bombs. And you use these little chili balls. Um, they're perfect to be able to fill something and you've got that nice heat but not so hot that you can't resist but it does have a nice punch if you're if you normally don't eat hot I don't recommend you filling some of these because it will be hot uh, but not hot that you can't eat one uh, you'll feel the heat for sure but what I also do and I'm going to show you is I make jars uh, with uh, hot peppers under oil. Uh, a long time ago when I used to do this, I used to cut all these peppers by hand. Then I learned my lesson and I started to wear gloves when I used to cut my peppers because God forbid you touch your eyes. <laughs> my God, you're going to scream bloody murder. So um, I'm going to show you how I do them now. Really simple. I use my food processor. I just whip them in there. I don't care what the size or shape is. What it does is it makes a great, um, a great preserve uh, if you like hot peppers and you have too many instead of letting them all go bad because eventually they will start getting nasty on you if you don't dry them. Um, but I prefer them this way because uh, when you have them under oil, you could take some of this and throw it on pasta. Uh, you could just use oil sometimes and just drizzle it on pizza. So there's many uses. Uh, when you make uh, hot peppers under oil. There's the oil, you could use just the oil, or you can use the oil and the pepper, or just the pepper. It really is up to you. Now, these were all green, that's why I still have them in the fridge, but they started to go red on me. Some are still green, but I do have a lot that are red. So what I'm gonna show you is how I do my jars like I said very very simple and very and it's good to have because again uh, if you want just a tiny little bit of heat you could control yourself by just dipping your fork or spoon in there and then putting it on your food or if you like a lot like I do I just scoop it up and put as much as you want but it's good to have on hand uh, when I have this I also make um, hot mayo so what you do is when you're making your mayo you could throw maybe a tablespoon or a teaspoon however much you want and you put it right into your mayo and you get a nice little spicy mayo so there's a lot of uses when you when you uh, make hot peppers under oil I mean again you can just buy hot peppers and do it that way not a problem but if you have an abundance or if you see them uh, at the store at a good price and you like hot peppers then buy them especially if you get them at a good price and then put them away in jars or dry them up or if you have these nice cherry bombs, I call them cherry bombs, or you call them chili balls, you can fill them up only if you like the heat, guys. Not if you don't. If you don't, you could take those little tiny sweet bell peppers. They sell those little, little ones, and you could use those to fill up whatever you want. So I'm going to show you. Uh, what you also need is a lot of oil, yes. I know a lot of people are not into oil, so they're going to say, you know, uh, can you do that oil free? Yeah, you can. You can roast them, uh, but you got to find a way to preserve them. Now, you could preserve them under water and vinegar if you like, but they're always going to have that tangy, vinegary taste. Uh, these will have a little bit of vinegar at the end, but very little, mostly for preserving. I mean, the oil itself will preserve them. If I could only open, you see, you make knots and then you can't get into them. And thank you, brother-in-law. I'm so happy you thought of me. And I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so here we go. The ones that were green has finally turned red. Now what I could also do is, instead of waiting, um, I could actually make a green hot pepper jar. But I'm going to wait a little longer and see what happens to these green ones. But for now, I'm going to take these red ones. And I'm going to take a napkin and a knife. Here we go. I'm just going to take off, not the seeds, just the top part. I don't want that green part, so I'm just going to pull that off. But I will put 
um, put the pepper in with the seeds. Sorry, I'm not sure if you can see it. There they go, because the seed is where all the heat is, really. The seed and this membrane part. The pepper is hot, but not as hot as when you get to those seeds. So I have two types that he gave me, but I like using these in salads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave some of these because I like to just slice them up and put them in my salad. Not everybody's salad. Only Erica could endure what I do here. My husband would probably not eat it. So just take off the, uh, the green part, cut your pepper in four. That will just help it go through easier. Let me just get a napkin. I said I was going to get a napkin. Now, I know some of you probably call me crazy, but what I also do instead of using, uh, I just grabbed this now to, because I'm making a video, but I'll tell you what I do at home. Don't call me cheap, guys. What I'm doing is uh, finding ways to recycle and finding ways to uh, use what I have at home without having to go out and spending money. So, I'll tell you what I do. I had these paper towels. But when you get flyers, uh, you get the big sheets of flyers, and then you get these little booklet type of flyers. What I do is I cut them, and I use this instead of this. And I wipe and take off whatever debris is on my food, rather than using this type of towel and spending money. Yes, it's not that I'm cheap, trust me. It's because I'm doing my best to... Uh, Live more of a um, waste, waste free. I'm not a hundred percent waste free. No, I'm not. But I, I am trying to live. I'm trying to be less wasteful. Now this bag came with the peppers. My brother-in-law brought them. But what I will do is wash this and keep reusing the plastic as often as I can. And when I can't, then it's finally going to go into the recycle bin but as long as I can use it I'm going to keep using it I will wash it with soap and water and I will continue using it so but yes if you have uh, see very easy it does the same it does the same thing as if you're using that paper towel sometimes I even use it to pick up spills it's just it makes me happy knowing that I'm not just because I can't control these flyers you know they say um if you don't want flyers, leave your bag wherever he leaves it. Well, you know what? I end up finding the one I left and the one that he put for me to bring home. And I'm not going to just leave it there at the gate because with the wind and the kids, we're going to find those papers and plastic all over the street. And that's something I don't want. So I do bring it home. I save the plastic. I use it to cover food um, for the refrigerator and the paper. I make, I'll show you, I think there's a video where I make these pouches and I use this instead of buying the paper bags that they sell for the recycle bin, uh, not the recycle, the compost bin. Uh, so I make my own little bags and there's a video if you want to know how to make this, there's a video and the ones that are like smaller sheets that you can't make a bag. I just cut them in this size. I just cut them in the middle and then I use it for either picking up spills or whatever else I need them for. So it just makes me happy knowing that I'm not just... And then this goes into my recycle bin because they do take that. If it's dirty with food or whatever, they will take it. And if it's clean, I could put it in the... Sorry, in my compost bin, not my recycle bin. Why do I keep saying recycle bin? But if it's not dirty and I have way too much, yeah, I will put it. But there's so many things you can use those paper. You can use it if you're painting, if you're whatever. I use it on the counter sometimes, not to dirty my counter. I lay down the sheets and I, uh, I use that. And then I just roll it up and put it in my compost bin. So there's many ways of using it. And I just wanted to show you. I know it's a little simple recipe, but I know that it's a great recipe if you like heat. 
especially if you go out and buy it. I get mine because um, I like the ones under oil. I can get these Italian ones where they're under vinegar or even under oil, but they're so expensive for a little jar. So, especially if you get a whole bunch of peppers like for peanuts. Well, maybe not peanuts. But if you get a hold of peppers that are for like a good price, I say uh, make a jar and keep it in the fridge for when you need it. And if you find the peppers are too hot, I know uh, one time I got a hold of uh, ghost peppers. And it was just like, I couldn't even cook them in the house. It was like I was crying, uh, I was coughing, <laughs> I was choking. <laughs> My dog was like scratching at the door, let me out, you're fumigating me. So uh, when the peppers are way too hot, what I do is if I'm making the red ones, I'll put a couple of, maybe more than just a couple of red sweet peppers. And what it does is it pretty much cuts down um, the heat. It's not as hot. So what I do is I put a little bit of the hot ones and a lot of the sweet ones and I get more of a mild heat rather than a choking heat. But aren't these... Thank you, thank you, Sesti. The first person he thought was me, and I really appreciate it. But yeah, if you don't want your peppers, if you find even this is too hot for you, mix them in, mix them in with some sweet peppers. And you'll get a mild, a mild jar. Like I said, you do need a lot of oil to cook these in because if you don't cook them in a lot of oil I like to almost fry them uh, they almost get crispy but I'll show you what they look like once I'm done with them and then they go into the jar and my oil turns I'm going to show you later turns bright red so that oil has so much flavor that someone who wants just a little bit on their pasta all he has to do is just dip his clean fork in there and just drizzle a little bit on his pasta and he gets a nice hot pasta. Oh, this is quite a bit. I have some of these tiny ones. I'll just put them in whole. And I'm going to wait for these other green ones to go red and then I'll either cook something with them or I can simply make another jar. Now here's something I also do. If they're little peppers, I put them on skewers and I just let them dry. So this is a way you can do the small ones. But I don't advise doing this with these very thick uh, peppers because what happens is it's going to cause like a mildew in there. Trust me. I did it with some um, uh, scotch bonnets and half of them I had to throw away because you got to find a way to uh, dehydrate them, either with a dehydrator or, um, yeah, basically you would want to dehydrate them on a dehydrator. Or maybe use a string rather than something like this, because this will cause those to go funky on you. But if you're uh, doing some hot, the small peppers, uh, this is perfect. You can use a skewer, and they're there for you as you need them. And then you just pull them off, and you can just sprinkle them on your food. So that's another way of doing it, but you have to be very careful. What you can do is maybe spray some alcohol when you um, right on the wood, uh, the wooden stick, and then you can spear them. Uh, but you have to be careful because if you're not, you will get, they will go funky on you. So that's why I prefer doing them this way, and then I keep them in the refrigerator and everything's fine. But I love talking to you guys. I get so many people that tell me I should shut up because I talk way too much. Yes, lately I've had a few that said that I talk way too much. So I try to make some videos where I talk less. But I just love telling you stories on why I do what. And that's who I am. Now the ones who don't want to hear it, well, you have a choice. You don't have to come to my channel. And the ones that do want to hear it, I really want to thank you. Because sometimes I have a lot to say. It's just all these years of exp things that I've done and why I do certain things while I'm cooking.
Now, my mother never did these because it was way... She wasn't someone who loved hot peppers. Uh, but my father-in-law did, but he had a whole different system. He would actually take some of the acid out of the pepper. So he would cut them, then he would salt them, and he would let this acidy water come out of the peppers. And then he would cook them in oil. And they would get jarred that way. Okay, so I think I got all the red ones. Now I've got... Yeah. Yeah, now I'm stuck with the green ones and these long... Did I lose a pepper? I don't want JJ getting it. I've got the smaller ones and I've got these long ones which I keep for salads. I just cut them. And like for myself, when I eat a salad, because you know I eat mostly raw, right? Come winter time, let me tell you, it gets cold in Canada. So eating raw can get a little difficult. A lot of people kind of give up because it's hard for them to be able to eat raw in the winter in Canada. But what I do is I, le I eat a lot of hot peppers and that kind of heats up my body so it makes everything just a little easier. Even my smoothies, I'll put a chunk of hot peppers in there in the winter. But when I eat a salad, summer or winter, because I just love my hot peppers, uh, I'll take one of these and I'll cut slices in rings and I put one of these in and look how big it is. Sometimes they're even bigger. I'll put one of these in my kale salad, usually a big, large, large bowl. I'll put one of these. I'll put some uh, coconut shreds. I'll put cranberries. Uh, trust me, my salads are delicious. And they're all oil-free, believe it or not, because I try not to use too much oil when I eat. But my husband does not mind the, uh, the oil. And oil does... I mean, it's not that I don't like oil. I love oil in food. But I'm always trying to eat as clean as I can myself. I don't force anybody else to eat the way I do. That's the way I do it. Anyhow, so here we go. I'm going to put this through, and I'm going to show you how small I get them. He went right up my nose. <coughs> yes, <coughs> I'm telling you, all this hot pepper could choke a horse. <coughs> all right, do wear a mask. If you can't, if this is the first time you're doing this, I say wear a mask so you don't take any of these fumes because they can be pretty powerful. Now, when I cook them, I cook them with all the seeds. I do not take the seeds out. But then again, if you want a more mild hot pepper, you can remove the seeds and just use uh, the fleshy part, the outside part, which is the pepper. You could do it that way. But since we love ours as spicy as you can get it, um, and again, like I said, even though I make them very spicy, you have control. If you want to just put like a dip your fork in or dip half of your fork, it really is up to you how much you want to consume of this. But I like to make my jars very spicy and then whoever wants it, it's up to them what, uh, how they're going to use it. Uh, but if you're afraid of all the heat, but you do like heat, you just kind of want a mild heat, remove the, remove the seeds and just use the fleshy part, and it's going to be spicy enough. Trust me, these peppers are going to be spicy enough just without the seeds. But if you like that, mm, I say go for it and put everything in it. Everything except for the stem. So now, here's my... Okay, it's a little hot. I had it on warm already. I have quite a bit of oil. But I will need probably more. You see how much oil I have? But I will need more oil for sure because I need to fill up my jar. Actually, you could pack these, so it's really not that much oil you're going to use. So I'm going to try and be as careful as I can because oh, we're good. Nothing is going to squirt back at me. I was just heating up the oil. And now I am going... Oh, sorry about that, guys. What's Connie without a good shake, right? I'm always shaking you guys around. And get as much as you can. And after you've cooked, after you've cooked, 
these peppers in your pan, I would advise if you're going to cook anything in that pan, <laughs> try and cook something that you want a little heat and don't add heat to the dish because the pan will get hot on you. It will have a nice little bite, nice little spice to it. So whatever you cook is going to pick up some of the spice. Not a lot, but it will pick up. A lot of people aren't, don't know about that. And then when they go and try and do what I did, and they use their pan the day after, the same day, and it's like, oh my God, my pan was so hot. Yeah, look what you're cooking. Okay, so here we go. I got as much as I can. I will add more oil. You want them almost swimming in oil. And the oil I use is sunflower, uh, because that's the oil I find that... Uh, can tolerate the most heat without it turning into a bad oil. And where did I put my oil here? And I'm just using sunflower oil. And you almost want to have them swim. Okay. And now we're going to start cooking these up. And this beautiful yellow oil is going to turn, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put this on my burner. And I'm going to jack up that heat. And I'm going to show you the color. You see that oil? Let me see if I can get a spoon to show you. I have a plastic pink spoon so you could get an idea. Do you see that oil? That oil is almost red. I wish I had a white spoon. I don't. But that oil is very, so very red. So like I said, if you like hot stuff in your food and you want to just put a little bit on your pasta, all you have to do is maybe dip your and just sprinkle that oil on your pasta rather than going in and grabbing all that hot pepper. But this stuff is to die for. It is so good. My husband says, that's all you made? This is what the peppers need to turn red. And if you find any I said, at the market, I said, bring them home. But next year is another year, and maybe next year we'll make more. So I'm going to cook these up, and I'm going to show you. You want them almost to, the oil to come to like a boil almost. I just need the right spoon for this. Now you can add salt to this, which I will. Here. You want to add a little bit of salt, not too much because then it'll be just way too salty. And if you can tolerate a lot of heat, you could even kind of dip your finger to see how salty it got. And then you could always add more if you want to. But basically you want to be able to almost bring this oil to a boil and it's going to extract all the oils from the peppers and this yellow oil is going to turn like a beautiful red oil and we're cooking our peppers and then we're going to add a little bit of vinegar at the end not much okay notice how it's coming it's coming almost to a boil that's what you want you want to fry them because if you're going to put less oil in your pan and cook with very little oil, you still need a lot of oil to, uh, to seal your jar so they don't go bad on you. And these will last a long, long time in, in the refrigerator if you make a lot of them. Now, there's another thing I do is I put just a pinch of baking soda and what that does is it kills the acid in the peppers. So these are all my tricks guys. They're not as, as, as acidic. So you don't even have to mix these. When they're cooking like this you really don't have to mix them. You just want to make sure that they do get cooked. Uh, put a pinch of that baking soda like I said. Add salt. 
and then test again just by dipping your spoon in it. Just put your finger on top of the spoon and test it for salt to see if you're okay with salt. You can even add it a little later. But very, very easy to do and so delicious to have. And again, if you want to stretch this and this is way too hot for you, cut up some red peppers and maybe use half of the peppers I use and the rest could be all sweet bell peppers. And what you're doing is you're cut, cutting down the heat. It won't be as hot your jar and you can stretch your peppers and make a lot of jars. Boy, did I learn a lesson. I remember, like I said, when I used to cut those peppers by hand, oh my God, I couldn't touch my face like for weeks. All I had to do was lick my finger and it would be hot. So I'm making my life easy. And I used to use very little oil and then I had to always make sure I wasn't burning the peppers to the pot, which was a pain in the butt. And then I would use the oil I needed anyhow. So I said, oh yeah, I'm gonna put the oil, a lot of it, cook them with that oil and then all I do is fill my jar. Makes life a lot easier. These are almost done. So I'll see you in a bit guys. Okay, these are almost done here okay so that's what it looks like don't want to overcook them and you don't want to undercook them either uh, they are just perfect the oil has gone red on me now I have about there we go a teaspoon of white vinegar and I'm just gonna add that to my hot peppers you could even add more if you want. It's really up to you. I put about a teaspoon. But if you want more of that vinegary taste, you can just simply add a little more. There you go. And that's going to also help with the preserving. Let me shut this. Sorry. So, like I said, you can add a teaspoon. You can add a little more. That's up to you if you like that vinegary taste. Uh, with just one teaspoon, you don't even taste the vinegar. Uh, I put a little more just to show you that you can. And what you can do is just taste it without burning your finger because this is hot now. And see. Woohoo. If you want a little extra salt. And this is ready to be put in jars. I used to be my mom's. It's always nice to have things from from your mother, especially when you don't have your mother anymore. Everything you find that was hers is like bonus. I am off center, eh? Of course I am. What else is new? So I start off first with the peppers. And then I add whatever hot oil there is. And if I need more oil, I just add to it. So the amount that I made is basically one jar, one jar of hot peppers. Or what you could also do, which is fun, is make this for Christmas gifts to give to your friends and family. Okay, I'm going to try and do this without spilling it. Oop, I better put the pepper in first. Sorry, sorry, sorry my, my, my camera died. I was saying, uh, if you use anything that's got oils, um, such as hot peppers or a pesto, uh, and you consume whatever's in it, always try and retop 
with oil this way everything stays submerged and it doesn't spoil on you you want to make sure that everything that you have in your jar is covered in oil you don't have to fill it to the top but you just want to if it goes down halfway you just want to top it up with a little bit of oil and keep those peppers submerged and it'll last a long time but if you don't you're going to start getting funky stuff in your jar and that's what anything you use that's either under oil the vinegary ones will never go funky on you i do add vinegar to it so it, it does really last a long time but I still top it up with a little oil because that oil is good for whatever. You could even use this to cook. Instead of putting cutting a hot pepper in your plate or in your pan, you could put just a teaspoon of this oil and then cook whatever you want to cook and you get that spicy, spicy taste. So it's never a waste to have some oil, some extra oil. So here we go. Easy. And now we're going to just close it off. Okay, um, like I said, I'm not worried if I have extra oil because I do have a jar I'm going to show you where, here we go. This is the one I used to buy. Uh, it's an Asian one and um, yeah, very expensive. So if you could get hot peppers like for cheap, uh, sometimes uh, they're just a little bruised. It doesn't matter. Get them. Just cut off that little bruised tip and then uh, make a jar of them because... It is pretty expensive. This thing is about six dollars. Um, so here we are. Uh, I will put the rest of the oil in this jar. Now if I'm cooking something and I don't want to use the hot pepper, I just want a little hint of heat in my food, I could just take a little, uh, maybe half a teaspoon, put it in my pan, and then I cook whatever I have to cook in it and it picks up that heat. Uh, so I'm not worried if I have extra oil. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to close this up. But there you go. Very easy to do. Uh, and if you get a chance, like I said, if, you, if you're if you not into the way too, uh, too much heat, um, even if you have a little bit of hot peppers, cut up a sweet pepper with it. Uh, or two. You know, the more sweet pepper there is, the less of the uh, hot peppers, you get a nice mild hot pepper um, jar where you can take it and just put some on your pasta and it's delicious especially if you're making a white pasta with some garlic and some olive oil and you put a little bit of this it's just yummy uh, if you're making a beautiful pizza all you have to do is put a little bit of this on your pizza and it's like heaven on earth so if you like the heat try this and uh, make as many as you can and just put them in in the fridge and there you go another jar of hot pepper for my family okay and here we go take this oil and I'm just going to pour it into this other jar and I have extra oil Oop. now if I'm cooking something uh, I might just leave this pan the way it is put it somewhere cover it with a lid and then whatever I'm cooking I can use this pan that's got already all that oil and heat on it and I don't even have to add the hot peppers so, just ways of doing things so again I'm gonna thank you guys for coming by and for the people that can't handle me talking I'm sorry guys but I love to explain as much as I can and not that you guys don't know I'm sure some of you already know but I just love talking to you and I appreciate you and guess what See you later. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.